Hey traders, welcome back to another video. In this video, I want to talk about a function that you will be using most of time in your PyScript codes, and that is tables function. So first of all, let me just go ahead and show you the utility of this function a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply one of my indicators that is supply and demand indicator. Now this supply and demand indicator shows us the real time formation of supply and demand zones onto the chart. And this table, as we can see here, is showing us the zone types and the values of highs and lows of the zones that are forming here in this area here. And there are a lot of ways you can use this table to plot information. For example, you can uh, use it to backtest your trading strategy. You can plot the, uh, your account balance in real time onto the into the table, or you can make screeners like uh, these ones. So let me just go ahead and apply some of the screeners. So let me just go ahead and apply this one. And this screener is using the tables function to plot the RSI value of more than 40 cryptocurrencies onto the chart. So just by looking at one at, at one chart, you're able to see the RSI value across multiple pairs. So that's how like that's the functionality of table. So let me just go ahead and show you how tables work. So for that, let's just go ahead uh, to the Pine editor and here. First of all, let's define our tables. Table definition or variable, and we're gonna give it a value of table dot new. And then here, we have to give it a bunch of arguments. Now let's go ahead and look in detail about the arguments. So this first argument is the position. And this position argument is where do we want to plot our table? Do we want to plot it here, here, or here? Or we want to plot it in the middle or the bottom right? here here and here so these are nine positions we can plot our table i mostly like to plot my table in this area at the top right so that's what i'm gonna go ahead and define so i'm gonna go ahead and say position is going to be position dot top right and the next argument that we have to give is number of columns so for my table i am going to give it three columns so that is going to look like this so here we can see that there are three columns in this table here and that's what it's going to look like so here one two and three so that's what our table is going to look like and now let me just go ahead and define the number of columns that is going to be three and for my table I'm gonna go ahead and give it a rows of four so I'm gonna say rows four and it's gonna look something like this one two and three so it's gonna have three columns and four rows so in total we are going to have this type of table forming here now let's go ahead and define other arguments so the bg color i'm gonna leave it to transparent then i'm gonna give it a frame color of white and frame width is going to be two similarly the border color is going to be white and border width is also going to be two so let's go ahead and define this border width is going to be two so this is our table that we have defined and it will look like the one that i had i had drawn so now let's go ahead and plot the index of each cell so the way we get the index since we have given three columns and four rows so as i said our table is going to look something like this now in each cell it has a specific index and the way indexes work is the first column is always zero then we have one and two and similarly the first row is always zero then we have one two and three so since we said that there are going to be four rows as we can see here and three columns as we can see here so the index of this cell is going to be zero zero the column number comes first then comes the row number then we have this one here so we're going to give it a like, like the index of this cell is going to be one zero and similarly we can give the get the index of each cell two zero and zero one 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 two one so you get the idea so that's how we get the indexes of each cell in the table and that's how we define our table cells so let's go ahead and give our table sell some values 
So let's plot each index inside each cell, like index of each cell inside that table. So let me just go ahead and give it the table ID that is going to be table definition. And first, we have to give it the column number, then we have to give it the row number. So column is going to be zero and row is also going to be zero. Now let's give it the text and the text is going to be the index of this cell. So text is going to be zero comma zero. And that's how we're gonna define our table. So let's go ahead and define other cells and let's define it by columns. So there are going to be four rows in each column. And here the rows will change. So second row will be one, two, and three. And similarly, here we can change this to one, two, three. And now let's go ahead and change these columns. Don't worry if you are not like understanding what I'm doing because it will become very clear once I update this on the chart. Now, uh, if I save it and add this to the chart, let me just go ahead and set the overlay to true. So overlay is going to be true. So now let's add this to the chart. Okay, let me just assign this a true value. Now let's add this to the chart. So you see we have successfully plotted our table with the index of each cell within the cell. So now let's go ahead and give it some color, give it the text some color as well. So let's go ahead and give it a color of white. So text color is going to be white as well. And let's save this. So now it will become white. So this is exactly what we had drawn earlier. So if we look here, this is zero, one, and two, and this is zero, one, two, and three. We have the column number here that is one and then we have the row number that is two. So you see how we are plotting the index of each cell within the table. Now let's go ahead and put some useful data here. So let's say we want to plot the candle number here. For example, we want to give this a heading of candle. Then here we want to plot the opening and closing price within these cells for candle one, two, and three. And our candle one, two, and three are going to be this latest candle, this previous, and this second last candle. So let's go ahead and do this. So first, if inside here, as I said, we want to give the heading. So zero, zero is going to be our candle number. And then this one, zero is going to be our opening price of each candle. So we're gonna say open. And this two, zero is going to be the closing price close and now let's save it and see the changes in real time so here you see candle number open and close and now let's go ahead and give the candle numbers of panel one similarly and go ahead and change these two and three and here since now we are going to be plotting the opening and closing prices we want to get the opening and closing price of each candle and the way we do that is we're going to convert since the opening and closing price is going to be a float value we want to convert it into a string string because inside this table we can only plot characters or strings so let me just go ahead and change this from here to str to string and here i'm going to plot the close uh, opening value of the most recent candle and similarly, if I, I can copy this and paste it here and here and to get the opening price of these previous candles, I can just go ahead and put one here and put this two here here. That is the reference operator. Now, if I save it, we'll see the opening and closing prices. So, for example, here we can see the candle one has opening price of 0 0.8733. So the candle one is here. And as it said, it has opening price of 0 0.87338. And you can see that being reflected here. Let me just zoom in. You see exactly, uh, we are getting the exact value inside our table. Similarly, if we check the candle 
three opening price. So the candle three in our case is this second last candle here and its opening price is around here. So you can see the opening price that it's plotting is 0 0.86005, which is exactly what we are getting in this scenario here. So now let's go ahead and plot the close values in similar manner. So str two string and close. And now we, we should get the values of the previous candles as well. So for that, we're gonna use the reference operator. So let's go ahead and use that. And now let's save it. And once we update it, you'll see the closing prices here as well. So as you can see here, the closing price of this is changing in real time because this is the real time candle as you can see here. So if we go to our lower time frame, you will see the closing price changing here. And we can go to any other currency pair as well. For example, if we go to Bitcoin, we'll see the similar thing. So you see the closing price changing in real time. And as I said, you can plot all kinds of data. For example, if I want to check if the latest candle is bullish or bearish, I can plot that as well. So let's go ahead and <coughs> change our table a little bit. So let's say we want to check the nature of each candle inside this column. So we're going to define it to nature. And then we can use the conditional statement that is if open is greater than close, that would mean the candle is bearish. Then we want to say bearish. And if it's not, then it should plot bullish and similarly we can check the nature of previous candles as well let me just go ahead and copy this and plot this here so we just have to use the reference operator to reference the previous candles so now if we save it we will be able to see whether the candles are bullish or bearish Let me just remove this previous one to a chart. So you see the latest candle is bullish, then this one is bullish, and this candle three is bearish. That's what we are getting onto our table as well. Now all three have become bullish, and you see the table working in real time. So that's how you use a table in PyScript to plot conditional statements, to plot numbers, to plot strings onto the chart. I hope you were able to understand the concepts in this video. If you have any questions, please comment down below. I would love to answer them. Also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you in the next video.